Hey everybody, today we are going to be discussing the fourth and final dynasty of ancient China, the Han Dynasty. So when you're listening to this presentation, make sure you take notes. Um, you should only take notes on the red text, okay, the red text. After this discussion, go into Google Classroom to your ancient China notes and complete the Han Dynasty. Okay, this will be it for the notes. We've completed all four dynasties and we've also completed the three philosophies of ancient China. Okay, so after this discussion, um, make sure you write your notes into the column of the Han Dynasty. Again, I'm going to say it one more time. Only take notes over the red text. So, an overview of the Han Dynasty. As you can see, the Han Dynasty is significantly larger um, than the Qin Dynasty. The Han Dynasty extended into modern day Vietnam and Korea and also extended. Um, farther west. It conquered the Qin Dynasty. So the Han Dynasty replaced the Qin Dynasty according to the Mandate of Heaven. It began 206 BC and it lasted until 220 AD. So a little, a little over 400 years compared to the Qin Dynasty's 15. The Han Dynasty is considered the Golden Age of Ancient China. So Golden Age, it's a time of peace, plus a time of prosperity and wealth, which led to many different achievements in agriculture, military, warfare, weapons, you know, art, medicine, science, etc. So let's talk about the Han Dynasty and their government. So they set up a bureaucracy. A bureaucracy is the network of appointed officials that assist in providing government. All right, and this pyramid is kind of a illustration of that, right? You start with the emperor, and then you have um, some of his helpers, then you have more of his helpers, and then so on. It's a, it's a network, it's a system, it's a hierarchy of government. A example of this would be at Faith Islamic Academy. You have at the top would be Brother Mekki and the Board of Education, then the principal, then the teachers. Okay, so that is also a system of bureaucracy, but the Han Dynasty set one up within their government emperor and then and then different government officials underneath him government officials were chosen based on their ability and knowledge that means they were chosen based on their merit okay it wasn't based on their wealth or who they were related to it was based on their ability and their knowledge Government officials had to pass a civil service exam. This is a this was a long and difficult test that they they had to pass in order to become a government official. Um, it was based on the teachings of Confucianism. Government officials were evaluated every three years. And at that time, they could be promoted, demoted, 
are simply kicked out of their position altogether, out of government. And government officials couldn't serve in their home district, which was very unique um, compared to previous dynasties. All right, you can't, because they believe they would play favoritism or they would have, um, they will, yeah, they would play favoritism to the people um, that they grew up with or they are their family or so they could not serve in their home district okay so the han dynasty set up a, buro a bureaucracy and government officials were chosen based on their ability and knowledge which is called merit so let's talk about some of the han dynasty inventions some of these um, we still use today actually most of these we still use today so the first one is they really developed iron and they made plows and swords out of iron. Iron was a very, still is a very strong metal. And with iron, they were able to make the swords longer, which means they could stand farther back, uh, farther back in combat. Okay. So iron um, created very strong plows and swords. You also had the invention of the kite. And kites were used by military to send messages from one side to another side of um, the military camp or military um, force. There was also the invention of the chain pump, which these three men are doing. Okay, the chain pump raised water to fields from lower irrigation ditches or canals. So if you see um, workers would pedal as they're doing to turn the wheel, which is right here, which would then move these planks up from the irrigation canal or ditch, and it would it would push the water uphill onto um, the fields. Okay, so they invented the chain pump. It made for a lot less work, all right? Could you imagine carrying up buckets um, from the bottom of the hill to the top of the hill? And they also invented the wheelbarrow. It was easier to carry heavy loads in a wheelbarrow instead of carrying it on their backs, okay? So the invention of the wheelbarrow. Let's talk about more inventions. We have paper. Paper was cheaper than silk, which they were they were writing on, and it was easier to use than bamboo strips. So the invention of paper. All right, they had a fancy writing known as calligraphy that they would they would use this paper for. All right, paper was also needed because um, it allowed for the government officials to keep records as well. There was also some advancements in medicine. You have acupuncture. Acupuncture is when you insert thin needles into a specific part of your body. And it was, and it is still used today for curing illnesses that strike quickly, such as headaches. So it was to relieve those quick striking illnesses. The Chinese believed that acupuncture was a way to rebalance someone's yin and yang. They also made um, discoveries about um, the circulatory system within a human body. They figured out that the heart pumps blood through the body okay so they they figured out that the heart is where um uh, the organ that pumps the blood through the body as well all right let's let's keep going the seismograph used to detect earthquakes okay and this what i'm circling on the screen now that um, they used to detect earthquakes 
they were able to send help right away once an earthquake was detected. They could detect earthquakes um, hundreds of miles away. The magnetic compass, and this um, photo at the bottom is the original Chinese compass, the magnetic compass. It was used to determine dire direction, you know, north and south, east and west. All right, and it made trade and exploration safer. Okay, so they knew which direction they were going. You also had the invention of porcelain. Porcelain is a beautiful, hard ceramic. And it was used to make plates, vases, and statues. And here's an example of a Han Dynasty porcelain uh, vase. All right, so these are all the inventions of the Han Dynasty during this golden age of ancient China. You know, think of think of the ones that we still use today. Most of them, right? So it's a, it was an ama amazing accomplishment. And the legacy of the Han Dynasty is still today. I mean, you, you're writing on a piece of paper right now taking these notes, right? So Han Dynasty trade, this is the last um, slide. We have not read about this in the book yet, but I wanted to talk about it since it relates to the Han Dynasty. There was increased, increased trade of goods and ideas with the West along the Silk Road. And the Silk Road got its name not because it was an actual road of silk. Come on. But it's because silk was the product um, that was most popular with the West. Um, silk was so valuable that one pound of silk was equal to one pound of gold. Okay. Because China. China held the secrets to how to make silk, okay? It was a very, um, and they didn't share the secret, all right? Why would you when it's such a, um, a, a valuable good, all right? It was 4,000 miles through Central Asia to Mesopotamia and Europe. So you start in China, you go through the Middle East, there's Uzbekistan, you go through Iraq where the um, uh, Mesopotamia was and then into Europe um, ending in Italy. All right. And we'll talk about the significance of that next year. I'm talking about it with seventh grade right now about the significance of Italy. Uh, the Chinese traded goods such as silk, paper, and pottery, all right, things that were not um, – in the West, right? They didn't have silk. Paper was a new idea to them. And they traded ideas with the West. The three philosophies we talked about, you know, was traded with the West on the Silk Road. Remember we talked about cultural diffusion, the spreading of ideas, all right? So not only did the, the, the Silk Road, did the Chinese trade goods, but they also traded ideas along the way. Okay, here's your here is the discussion on the Han Dynasty. Go take notes and then you can start working on your mini project.